Hey, we are live. Hi, guys. Uh, Thunder E here. Welcome to episode 11 of uh, the weekly. I was about to say Comic Crunch. Sorry. I've been in uh, Comic Spider Man Civil War mode for the last couple of days. And with me is Mr. Sam, aka Black Iron Man. How's it going, man? Hi, right, guys. All right, cool. Yeah, uh, it's a two man show today. Uh, Mr. Juan Bagnell is at a wedding and uh, Warren is uh, working hard. So uh, it's just us holding the fort today. So let's kick things off with our uselessness of the week. This one actually came late to me, but I found it quite interesting. Uh, this has to do with uh, Singapore. Uh, if you live in Singapore, you know very well that if you're buying a car over there, uh, most of the time you have to, you're usually importing the car because Singapore is, is an island state small, they don't manufacture cars there, and they put very high premiums on uh, on important vehicles, so a lot of taxes involved. So for instance, you can import a $50,000 car, and eventually it will cost you 110000 That's just how it works. Um, and uh, someone imported a Tesla over, Model S, and they would be taxed 11000 instead of usually getting a rebate, which everyone does, and uh, basically, uh, they were taxed uh, an emission tax because Tesla still uses electricity, which is produced from hydrocarbons from the power plant in Singapore. <laughs> so, thoughts on this, Sam? I mean, <laughs> that person is paying a huge electrical bill. <laughs> so you're billing them twice for electricity. This is the electricity that you pay for regularly, and this is the electricity you pay for because you drive a car. That's kind of stupid, but yeah. You know. So I mean, I guess they, they were just trying to stick him. I, 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 I'm almost certain that this was not a decision made by anyone in a position to make this kind of decision. I think this was just someone who was like, "We have to find a way to build this guy." I've never seen a Tesla before. I've never, you know, we've never dealt with this situation or whatever. So uh, we'll stick him with this, and we'll say, um, "Yeah, electricity is made somewhere." You know. <laughs> <laughs> Carbon emissions. <laughs> it, I mean, it's it, it kind of silly. It, it is. It is kind of silly, but um, you know, it's one of those things where uh, it's just like everywhere else, even the U.S. You know, laws have to eventually come forward and you know make sense. Yeah. You know, and not and not try and just you know impede on people, especially especially in a country like Singapore where you're trying to stay away from vehicles and you want people to either bring in. Uh, low emission vehicles, and somebody's bringing something that's almost clean. I mean, literally, the emissions levels are really low. No, no. But the thing is this, right? If you're going to say that Tesla is not a clean fuel because we they generate, uh, it uses electricity and it, hydrocarbons are used to generate the electricity in Singapore, then the question becomes, why don't we charge everyone else that uses electricity in, in Singapore? Singapore? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like this Tesla is not responsible for the use of hydrocarbons in generating electricity. You're using an already like a, a pre-existing um, infrastructure, right? And not creating additional pollution. Simple as that. This guy should be getting a pat in the back and being like, "Okay, then, man, you did good." You did oh yeah, good. I mean, if you're in Sweden, or I, can, I think it was Sweden, yeah, I was watching documentaries about you know just clean energy, and the you know in the U.S., I think the tax rate is also maybe around eleven to fifteen thousand. That's the mm -hmm. rebate you get for a Tesla. Also, in in Sweden, is double. That. Yeah. I mean, quite actually, a, lot, and a lot of people buy Teslas there. Yeah, oh. it is. It is one of those where the government is like, "Yay!" <laughs> you know, buying a Tesla is. You know, I mean, uh, the Tesla that uh, test drove was about a uh, hundred thirty-five thousand. Literally, you could get the car for a hundred thousand, or even if you buy it used, you're getting it really cheap at that point. <laughs> you know, because of the rebate. So it's just one of those things that you know I find quite interesting. But anyway, let's move on to our first topic of the week. Android N Beta was released this week. What's really cool about this is this is the first time Google has now made it easy for anyone to actually test out their software. They've actually gone the Apple route, which as one thing I gave Apple for whenever they release their beta OS, it's a really easy process of connecting to iTunes and just updating your software. Right. And then you can also roll back. Uh, Google has now given uh, users, and the link is down below. Uh, now, Android N will work on the Nexus 5X, the Nexus 6P, the Nexus 6, the Pixel C, and the Nexus Player. 
Uh, I will talk about the benefits in a second, but there's a link where you can opt in. Uh, if you have one of those devices, you just have to uh, uh, sign in with your Google account, opt in, and you're good to go. That's it. It'll automatically download to your device. You just have to accept on your device and you're running Android N. Very simple process. Uh, no more flashing ROMs or all that craziness that we had before, you know, and just like trying to set it up. It's, I mean, you can still do that if you want to, but this is a much easier process. Now, one of the biggest new benefits in Android N is that finally they have multitasking split windows, yeah. something Samsung has had for years now. So it, yeah, the, the application could do it. It's, it's powerful enough to do it. It's just like Google has not integrated quite a few things in yet. And mm -hmm. actually, I don't see any news about one of my pet peeves about Android in general. Which but um, and then I, go through go through the specs, and then we'll go through it. Then, then, we'll, then I'll let you know what the pet peeve is. <laughs> well, the, the biggest thing is 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 multitasking in there. Uh, you've got some changes to the app drawer. Um, it's actually got a cleaner look. I actually like the look that they've added to it in terms of like uh, showing you notifications and also the the draw overlay. Um, but the biggest thing still there is uh, the split screen, uh, multitask split screen, which is a little bit, if you can check out our video on that, it's a little bit convoluted. You know how Samsung has uh, the icon. It will have an I when you go to multitask, it has an icon behind the app that can multitask. You just have to tap it. This, you kind of have to drag, and you, know, you don't know which app works with it yet, so you kind of drag to the top. It may not work. It may work. So, I mean, it's beta, so... Um, you know, I'll give them some benefit of the doubt, but I expected them to at least copy what works well first. <laughs> to me, I don't get why companies do this, is that when you do beta and if you're copying somebody, you might as well just copy what works well first and then improve on it as you make the beta go forward. So, but yeah, what is your, your uh, pet peeve? Clear all notifications or clear all windows, close all windows, I should say. I don't see anything about that. You could do it in, you could do it in Samsung easily. But then when you go into like your multi windows, like where you want to basically jump from one window to the, to the next, on Android, pure, on pure Android, you can't close all of them at the same time. Like, why? Uh, let, like, let's swipe. let's see. Let me just make sure. Swipe. Yeah, yeah, you can. Swipe. You can. It's still, it's still there. Swipe. It's still there. It's still, swipe. It's still there. Ugh, yeah. That's annoying. <laughs> that's freaking annoying. <laughs> it, it's, we should it's be able to just hit one button and go, close everything. Yay. You know? I, I do agree. I, I think one thing that you need to fix is Chrome. Chrome needs to be fixed because especially when you move away from stock Android devices, you realize that Chrome, just like on the browser, I mean, just like on your desktop, Chrome eats memory like a bastard. It is terrible. And when you know, you know, you open up your, uh, when you open up your uh, browser and you realize you have 75 tabs running on Chrome on your phone, yeah, yeah. And when and the thing that's because each link you hit generates a new um, new tab. <laughs> a new tab. <laughs> and yeah. They don't tell you this. They don't tell you that. Plus the fact that when you turn off your phone, no app. I mean, your apps in multitask is still there, and all the tabs are still available. I mean, you turn off your computer, nothing. It's fresh. I mean, you may remember that. Okay, hey, these are the things you went to. Do you want to go back? But it's all there, yeah, which yeah. I find. Yeah, no, Chrome, Chrome does use up uh, quite a bit of, uh, uh, of memory, as well as uh, <clears throat> what's called the whole Android, uh, most of the, oh, man, what do you call those again? The overlay, the UI. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the ROM, the, uh, the Android ROM basically takes up a whole lot of, uh, it, yeah, you, I get it. It's, it's, it's basically the main OS and whatnot. But, um, oh, I'm sorry, the launcher, the launcher. When I, when I look at the launcher on my Note on my um, Note Five, it uses up quite a lot of resources. So hopefully they've done things to streamline um, streamline those resource hogs. Um, I, I haven't gotten the chance to to get my hand on Android N yet. I know I just got the five X, but so I'll uh, I don't think I'm going to experiment with that one. I don't think you I might try with your, your six. Yeah, I'll try it with the six and see. Yeah, you know I might I might also have to like. Um, take it off my Nexus 6 p <laughs> just in case. Because <laughs> it's funny, Lura was telling me yesterday after we finished the uh, Comic Crunch, he's like, you know, you might want to take Android N off that 6P. You know, it's a pretty nice device. Yeah. <laughs> the thing with me is, first of all, I don't want to do it on a device that's relatively new, just in case anything gets messed up. Yeah. Secondly, the 
5x is actually used for something. It actually has a purpose. Yeah. And I would, it would be kind of annoying if I couldn't use it when I needed it. So I think I'll put it on the 6 and see we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I'm actually looking oh, yeah, forward to that's right. Features. Zabik said the, yeah, the UI is extremely high res. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's more adaptive to your screen resolution now. So, um, which makes everything just look a little sharper and crisper, you know, just like this, love the image here, right there. Nice. I mean, the image is crisp, but it, it does look a little bit crisper and, and sharper, so. so if it adapts your screen, that means it probably isn't pushing high res all the time. It would scale down if it needs to, or scale up if it needs, oh, to. It needs to. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. That, that's good. So you shouldn't be killing my uh, battery. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. battery <usage. laughs> Although the, the funny thing is when I, when I installed it, it initially told me, uh, 85%, seven hours of battery left. I was like, at 85%, that's not right. I, it was, it's 70 it, hours of battery life. No, no, seven hours of battery life at 85%. Whoa. Maybe, maybe just, it was a glitch. Decided to tell you the truth. It was a glitch. It's still, it's still running. It's still Are running. You, no, no, maybe just trying to tell you the truth because that's what I find is a hundred percent is like eight hours, eight hours of battery. You have eight hours. <laughs> All right, moving on to some, uh, uh, you know, some gates, you know, issues. So Samsung has this little cheap ch uh, chip gate going on with the Galaxy S7, S and S7 Edge. Um, reports and also actually some benchmark tests came in from, uh, uh, this was, this is from GSM Arena, but Antonio 2 version 6.0, I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see that. So you see, uh, this is one of the reasons why they kind of went with uh, Snapdragon 820. Um, in terms of just uh, chip performance, it's the highest. A9 comes in second, and the Exynos comes in third. When you move down to GPU performance, this is where you see the huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the A20 beats everything on the market right now. Yeah. Um, even Apple's A9, you know, doesn't come close. You know, Apple touted the GPU performance they had last year. Uh, the Exynos really lags behind. And this kind of points to that. So a lot of people are saying, you know what, you know, if you live in Europe, especially in the UK, whether you're getting Exynos and, you know, in, in uh, Korea, you're getting, you know, you're, getting, you're going to be skimped out on a better processor. Yeah, but the question is this, for the S7, um, I think they stuck with the Exynos, man. No, the S7 Exynos is in Korea and Europe. In the U.S., oh, Korea and Europe. It's it's uh, 820. A20? Okay, because I, I I I was asking a rep at uh, MWC. I'm like, so what chain in the internal is like? The internals aren't changing. It's going to be an Exynos chip. And I'm like, what? And what? Why were we all having this big, uh, you know, conspiracy theory about you know Samsung and the A20 and exclusivity and whatnot? But okay, it makes sense. If the U.S. is still going to be A20, that's fine. Yeah. But the rep did say it was Exynos. Like, it's, I, it's, I it's think maybe what Exynos. they had, they had the show floor and yeah, what probably, they were the processors. Floor. Yeah, because that kind of took me aback. I'm like, why would you do that when the A20 is the, you know, the new big cat in town? You know? Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, from all indications, the A20 is is a beast. Now, uh, I got the S7 uh, yesterday. Uh, did a mini review, been playing around with it. The one thing I will mention though, which is very weird, it, I don't know whether it has something to do with the implementation of Android. Anytime you do something the first time, mm -hmm. there's like a hitch. So you know how um, you can, uh, you know how like just saving the image or even like, you know, you, Facebook has the ability to, from Facebook, you can go to Facebook and share an image directly to anything, any other app. Do the first time, you know, the new Android 6.0 tells you, ask you, allow access to um, hard drive so you can save yeah. the image and share. You just hit yes, there's a hitch. And then it works. Then after that, it just goes, everything really flies. But the first yeah, time you do it, there's just a hitch. Wow, that, that is interesting. Maybe it's because they, they don't preload uh, applications, so it's firing up the application or firing up, you know, processes as needed. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe that, that that could be the case. It's just one thing yeah. I noticed is that I was opening up stuff and I'm trying to, sh especially when you're sharing things with different apps, that's the most time you see where that hitch is. But once it's done, even after you reset the phone, like almost once you've done that Google uh, allow, you know, certain application, it's then it's almost like it remembers and it's like, okay, everything flows from there. But what really gets me about this whole, um, you know, this whole benchmark is when you look at a GPU performance, right? Um, during MWC, there was a big deal made about how the Exynos process, I mean, how uh, 
uh, S7 was going to be really big on gaming and how you're going to be able to, you know, how Samsung actually went an extra step and said it was going to give you credits to a specific game genre or game. To, yeah, they, you know, they have a gaming hub, uh, which I've been playing around with. Uh, I mean, the, what yeah. I think I, I think what they were talking about more is the gaming experience you're trying to give on the game uh, on they, the. They could uh, go device. ahead and say basically that it should be able to run. What was it like? Um, PlayStation, whatever they made it. They, they made an announcement. Yeah, desktop like right. No, it can. Yeah. I mean, but the Exynos with the Exynos, can. but with the Exynos. 8890, right? Yeah. Benching so far behind the Qualcomm A20, I, I think is a, it becomes very unfair that this is a feature you're pushing, but yet it lags far behind from region to region. So if you're in the Asian and e European regions, you, you're experiencing a worse, you're having a worse experience with your gaming than you would with the um, if you were in the Americas by far. And that's crazy. I mean, I mean, you could put it that way. The other way could be the fact that the A, uh, 8890 does a fantastic, I mean, for instance, the A9 chipset, which slightly beats the, the Exynos chipset, I, I will give Apple props. In terms of gaming, that thing is really smooth, really smooth. So, so let's say it comes that close. What it just means is that the 820 literally is just miles ahead above everyone. Yes. It, that, that basically, you know, Qualcomm this year just came back and just went, like yeah, they, they did have to prove they did have to prove themselves after the debacle with the A10. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I mean, I think that's where that's what we're seeing to a certain degree. But you know, if I were um, if I were Samsung, I would have probably gone with the A20 fully. Maybe just because they couldn't fulfill all the orders, mm -hmm. and that is why they just said, okay, fine, we'll keep Korea and we'll keep certain places in Europe as that. But yeah, it, it could be that just because of supply issues, you just have to pick and choose uh, altogether. So. I mean, well, I, I'm, I'm glad we get uh, preferential treatment with the A20. I'm not <laughs> about that. I just yes. feel bad for everyone else with the with the Exynos. That's that's just not good. That's very true. Um, moving on to some gaming here from Sony. Uh, this one is very interesting. Um, Sony said they admit that Oculus Rift is technically better than PlayStation VR. Like anyone thought PlayStation VR was amazing. Like, mm. thanks for telling us the obvious, Sony. Yeah, but you don't do that when you are, you know, you're going to release a device or not even that right before your competitor's device hits saying, oh, fine. You know, it's almost like saying I'm sitting down here. I have a PlayStation, right? I have a PC, but I'm like, you know, what? maybe I want to use PlayStation VR because I like, you know, all those PlayStation games, right? Quote, unquote. And then, which, you know, necessarily I don't, but, <laughs> um, but then Sony now comes out and says, um, well, Oculus is better. I'm like, you know what, forget well, it. it just, well, well let's, let's put it in context. Let's put it in context, okay? What he's saying is, if you're talking about, you know, overall VR, the quality of the high-end VR, yes. But for that high-end VR, you're paying almost twice as much as you would for a PlayStation, right? Yeah. You need a rig that's going to run that. So, I, I mean, yeah, the, the, the cost benefits of the play, what, PlayStation is what, 250 now, right? Yeah, yeah. 250 plus, say, three $400 headset. Let's call it 400 on a max end headset, right? Yeah. So you're looking at 650 for yeah. your PlayStation VR experience. For Oculus, that, you get a headset. <laughs> yeah. Oculus, it's, first of all, the headset is 599 Yep. So right. that's, and then 50 bucks for a rig? No. <laughs> no. Your rig must be at least a thousand bucks. This is called at a least. thousand it's, flat. It's, so right. it, you're looking at two totally different fruits here. It's like it's, it's, it's not comparing apples and apples. It's apples and oranges at this point in time. Um, giving apples to if that's your preferred fruit and oranges to your less preferred fruit. But um, yeah, PlayStation right now, it's it's a it's a console. It's not it's not pumping out the processing power of a, a you know thousand to fifteen hundred dollar um, PC. It's not doing that. They, they know that can't do that. So it's it, it's scaling. It's going to pro provide a VR headset that utilizes you know the hardware it's going to run on. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no need putting 4K capabilities in the headset that you only get 720p uh, resolution from your. Oh, yeah, you do get 1080p, but I'm just making an example. Uh, 720p from your um, your actual hardware from your um, rig. So there's no point in doing that. So I, I get what he's saying. Overall, hardware-wise, performance-wise, VR, yeah, Oculus wins it. He'll probably say the same thing about the Vive. He'll probably say the same thing about the OSDR. He'd probably yeah. say those things anyway. 
So he's he's just being realistic. Yeah, I, I, I think like he that. is. He but, I mean, but, but come on, like that's what something you should he should he should said. You know, we're gonna PlayStation will give you a compelling experience because of the PlayStation library. That's a selling point. You oh, you're, you're you're looking for for marketing. Uh, that, marketing that, that, I mean, that's well, that's the selling. We all know Sony. They're not the biggest uh, <laughs> and the best marketing. Uh, you know, arm. They don't have the biggest and the best marketing arm. They've done a great job marketing the PS4, but uh, yeah, they've they have made missteps uh, along yeah, the way. Yeah. I yeah, mean, that, yeah, because because that's something you say. Well. Um, Oculus is great. We like the experience you know, they provide on PC, but on PlayStation VR, think about Nathan Drake Uncharted. You know, it just has to throw, you throw yeah, stuff out there. Yeah, like, Nathan Drake. I mean, like people start going, oh, or Final Fantasy, you know, stuff yeah. like that where you're like, oh, I mean, I'm in a Final Fantasy world. I'm yeah. running around, I'm cloud. You know, that's where people start going, oh, Oh, hot day. yeah. And while you play the game, you have to carry a six ton hammer on your back. I mean, like, no, I, but... I would, that's the thing. Like, I'm hoping PlayStation does that with some of it because they have some really good titles that they can actually explore on for VR. And not just like, because using it at E3 was pretty much tech demos left and right. This was cool. It worked well enough. But I would love to see them tell, talk to, you know, whether it's uh, the Final Fantasy producers say, look, even if it's a Final Fantasy demo that gets people excited or something like that, you know, that say, this is what PlayStation VR can do, then you're like, oh, wow, okay, I'm, I'm in that world. But right now, he's just telling us that Oculus is better if you have I, I the money for it. Right. The question really is you, you, we're, we're all aware of mobile VR, right? With the cardboard and Samsung uh, Gear VR of the world. We're yeah. all aware of PC VR, which is, you know, you get the Oculus Rift OS VR from um, Steam, and then you have... Uh, um, no, OS VR is, um, oh, it's, it's Steam and Razer. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, Steam supports it too, sorry. And um, you have, uh, what's it called? HTC's Vive. Yeah. Um, as well. So we, we have on those two ends, which is to me the very low end and the very high end, we, we, we're aware of the products there. But in the middle, and that's the place where most people game on their consoles, right? We really don't have a solution. And the question then becomes, you know, if Sony can actually pull this off, we might see Sony actually steal the next generation war from Microsoft because Sony's working on a headset. Sony is working on a product that might actually be something that is, you know, remarkable for the next generation, um, you know, for the next generation console. But we don't have an answer from Microsoft, and this is the market that they need to focus on. I mean, I agree, um, but to some degree, also, I like Microsoft's approach. Microsoft has said, and they fully support both. Microsoft also. Um, understands that, you know, especially with Microsoft secretly just making Windows 10 and Xbox One the same, even though they kind of backtracked on that statement, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, for them, the, I, I see where they're going and I understand why making a headset does not make any sense for Microsoft. HoloLens, yes, but a VR headset, not so much. Now, the only, the only, quality, the only uh, problem is, can Microsoft now offer bundle deals for some of these things where the pricing becomes sensible, you know, to say, get your VR experience with Microsoft Oculus or, 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 or Vive, it will cost you 500 bucks, mm -hmm. you know? Well, we, we hope Microsoft can do that or we'll have these devices working, you know, all these devices, all the high-end devices working with your console, but they still face the problem that they, they haven't shown any demos. PlayStation has done it. Oh yeah, I mean, they, they, I, agree, I agree with you on that. The only demo that was shown was the, the uh, Halo 5 mm -hmm. was shown on um, Oculus, um, playing on Oculus off an Xbox One. So, yeah. But again, for them, I think it's, it's one shift where Microsoft isn't too concerned. I, I'm, just, I'm just speculating. I don't think they're yeah, too man. concerned about that because they're looking at it at a different approach that as long as we own the whole market from Windows to console, we are fine, and Sony has to do something very specific. So for us, you know, which is why some of these developers are like, you know, Microsoft is taking control of the PC base. That's probably you know where that kind of stems from. But you know, we'll see how it plays out. But I agree with you. I think Sony has a chance to really push it to the next level. To me, 
you know, if I were Nintendo, this is the perfect opportunity to leap back into the conversation. You know, just, just take that jump back in. Virtual and, Boy. And Virtual Boy too. I mean, this is the perfect chance for you to just be like, I'm sorry about the Wii U, but here. We know the last Virtual Boy gave you red color eyes and it was terrible, but this is much better with new technology. I mean, it would make perfect sense. Yeah, it would. You know? And they don't really have to do much. Yeah. Because at, at, at the price point, you know, at the at the price point where your console is, and at the you know the kind of specifications these consoles have, they could probably release a device that's not as expensive as you know the high ends of the um, OSVR, um, uh, Oculus, and um, v uh, and Vive. They could probably release something that's around that three hundred dollar you know mark, and that would be great. That's a great way for people to get into the market and actually experience VR and you know game at the same time. Yeah. So they, they might have a they might have a horse in this race if they, they play their cards right. That, yeah, I mean, with all the rumors, indications, surveys that point that their console is going to be now the most powerful console out of all three, um, and the console has a mobile element to it. Maybe that VR is the mobile element. Who knows? Um, that could be something that, like I said, yeah, they jump in and then, you know, you're like, wow, Nintendo is back. You know. Uh, and hopefully, you know, they don't make the many missteps that they've made. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 need, they, they need to just bite the bullet and finally decide to move to an x86 architecture. They really do. Uh, Zabik says, uh, it may be a gimmick like 3D TVs. No, it is not a gimmick like 3D TVs. Uh, it's just about implementation of VR. Um, I, I'm not a, I, should, I should say I'm not a big fan of putting anything on your face in order to um, experience you know, content. I didn't like it with 3D. Um, I don't like. I didn't like it initially with uh, the Oculus, but the more I see VR and the implications of what VR means, the more it makes sense that this might just be the screen that you have to experience content. Like, yeah, you would have a TV, but your TV never turns on because that's when for when people come over and whatnot. Yeah. But then your VR headset is how you're going to watch your movies. It's how you're going to play your game. It's going to be your fully immersive, personalized experience with media. So that, I, I don't think VR <clears throat> is a fad um, from that point of view. On, on like 3D glasses. Well, uh, three, I mean, Samsung and the uh, production of 3D TVs just stopped. Yeah. I think it was official last week. It's also. a fad. I said, who said it was a fad before? And I'm saying it again, it's, it was a fad. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't quite, I didn't quite get it. They, they try, remember when they tried this when the first, um, when they tried 3D, when the first, uh, what was it? Uh, Jurassic Park came out. You could get those uh, different color shaded glasses. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, that's what, that's what uh, you no, came for. No, no. I mean, the problem with 3D was the fact that 3D in theaters is very different from 3D at home. Yeah. And, and you cannot replicate active glasses. So, you know, with 3D, you had two types of technology, active and passive. Samsung went active, which tried to simulate, like, you know, objects mm -hmm. in front of you. And then LG had passive. What it does, it, it created a window into. So if you looked at LG's 3D, it was, there was nothing really in front, but it felt like it had depth of field where you were looking into an object. But for users, it just wasn't something that, you know, kept the motion. And I, I remember I was talking to a Samsung rep and, you know, even they say, kind of said that, well, one that they really enjoyed was, and because 3D is not there anymore, at least in that fad was uh, the World Cup, uh, ESPN's 3D um, uh, coverage of the World Cup. It was like, there was no, uh, there was no commentary, but it, it really felt like you were watching everything, like play by play, pass by pass, move on the pitch, you know, that kind of thing where, because, you know, soccer flows back and forth, it doesn't stop, that you can really feel it, you know, in there. And I was like, yeah, that could be great, but, you know, it's something that, again, still, it's sports. Sports is where you kind of want to sit down, you relax, you drink, you get up, you walk around. So, like you said, having the glasses on just... Yeah, it just kills it. Just kills it completely, you know. So, I mean, to, when they make holograms, true holograms, where we can just walk around the hologram and watch the whole thing. And then we'll all have bad eyesight because <laughs> we'll all be deprived from the sun because our rooms and everything will be dark so we can see the 3D projections clearly. And every time we go out, we'll go... Tss. Ready Player One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, moving on to our next topic here. So it seems like... Um, the S7 Edge is is a big winner. 
this is uh, from Pocket Now uh, reporting that the pre-orders for the S7 Edge uh, flat out destroy the regular S7. I think it's time for Samsung to just bite the bullet and forget the no, regular. I, S. I, I think the regular S7 is worth keeping around. The Edge right now is something new innovative and it, this is what the third iteration of the edge for the s line actually the second iteration of the edge for second the for the s but the, this yeah. is the third edge the device. third edge yeah edge device the first was a note device right yeah so note. people are finally getting used to the whole idea that you know we can you can have this nice edge that's functional uh, functional but also it looks different it's like a statement almost so i think by the time it's two or three generations i mean three or four generations into it it would even out because people would be like, okay, I don't really use the edge on this, on this device. You know, do I really want to spring a little more for this or just get the regular device that I normally use? Or people might find out that it really doesn't work for them because I know when I used uh, the edge, I kept on hitting that side, you know, and I, I, I kept because the way I hold my phone with my, my palm over the edge here, I wasn't getting good, um, good connection when I was trying to hit on actual icons. So people might find out that it's not really for, for them. So I think it's, it's it, right now it's hot. Hey, it's a beautiful device, but I think it's gonna even out eventually. I, well, I mean, the report says it, it's 2.5 two time, times greater pre-orders than the S7. Um, and I think one of the things, I mean, for me personally, um, I like the design of the edge. So design wise alone, it wins for me. And I'm like, even if I don't use it, it's fine. And I think Samsung should, make that bold statement of saying, this is the S7 Edge, 5.1 inches, and this is the S7 Edge Plus, 5.5, done. If you don't want to use the screen, uh, the Edge screen, you don't have to, you really don't. You, don't, you can no. turn it off. I mean, you can turn off the notification aspect of it. So um, I think that would be a better play. And that says like, look, we are moving forward and this device really is something that puts an aesthetic look on what our device our device looks like. I was hoping for that this year. I knew they wouldn't do that because also they kept micro USB charging, which I mean it's fine for them now, but I believe the note line is the one that will get all the, you know. You know, the, the thing is that, that whole idea of, you know, opting out of uh, USB type C, I totally get it. Um, I didn't realize because to me it wasn't a big deal, but I didn't realize how good it was a decision it was until I got my hand in the 5X. Okay, I basically just connected. I, I, I took the 5x out the box, and I have a <laughs> my USB connection it. connection here. So I'm like, oh, while I'm doing an update, I'm just gonna plug this in, and I'm like, oh shit, I can't. <laughs> I can't. That means every time I travel, I now have to either get an extra USB Type C, and the weird thing about USB Type C, it's not regular USB to USB Type-C. It's USB Type-C on one end, USB Type-C no, on the other. Is, that is only Google that does that crap. Yeah, but you see, that's the problem. Because at the end of the day, I have to either buy a whole oh, nother yeah. um, charger or always remember to use this one and not you know, not lose it, it, it when that's I That's the one thing I give Microsoft uh, props for, especially for the, um, uh, the 950 and 950 XL. They provide you with two sets of cables. They provide a charger, with USB Type C, then they provide you a transfer cable with USB Type C to regular USB, so oh, you can go cool. charge. And I was like, sensible because you know, no, everyone's not there yet. Yeah, people situation. need to get in the transition. You need to you, you, you need to empower them to transition from one um, technology to the next. Especially USB Type C, I like it. I like the fact that I didn't have to think about you know what side goes in what way, but. Yeah, right now I can understand why Samsung will be like, yeah, we don't want people saying us hate mail. <laughs> so I'm mean, actually, I mean, it's the same thing with with um, Apple too, and because you mean you know they brought it with the 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 new Apple Book, the 12 inch Apple Book, and then they didn't put it on the iPhone or even an iPad or something like that because they know too that yeah, you might want to wait first a yeah. little bit. It's, you know, let others but jump. On, on the jump laptop, down. it's understandable because you don't buy two or three different chargers for your laptop, right? Yeah. <laughs> but on, on a device where you might want to have that spare and whatever, I have quite a lot of these cables. So uh, it's really easy for me when I'm traveling to just grab one, throw it in the bag, knowing that when I come back, I can just find another one. If I lose that one, it's fine. But in the case of a USB Type C, it's it looks so similar that when you, if you grab the wrong one, you're totally screwed because you now have to go find a place that sells a USB Type C cable. So it's it's one of those it's it's one of those things where I can actually understand um, the decision behind it. Where actually, 
getting my your hands on a device and actually using it kind of gives you a little bit more insight to why a decision was made or not. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, we have some questions here. Um, SD Gadget says, how come Google doesn't like their phones and tablets, uh, doesn't link their phones and tablet like uh, Apple with continuity? I have a Galaxy Note 2 and a Tab 2, uh, but I can't pick them up. Samsung has connectivity between their um, the Windows laptops and the Samsung phones. Uh, for one, the app, uh, it is, but you can yeah. actually, uh, they showcased uh, the newest version of CES. It was really seamless uh, mm -hmm. connecting between the devices. This is something Google hasn't because Google, on the tablet side of things, tablets are not selling well anymore. Google tablets yeah. never really sold well in the first place. So I still want my Nexus 7 FHD to get fixed, Google. Yeah, so that that is something that just probably won't happen. Uh, Lynn Marie says the S7 Edge is awesome. It looks like she picked one up. Um, Good. Congratulations. Uh, LGH says they shouldn't forget about the normal S7. No, it can burn. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, uh, Zambiki says, did you manage to watch any triple X movies on virtual reality player? <laughs> on VR. <laughs> uh, we neither confirm nor deny the uh, fact that um, Triple X is coming out in VR. Is that what he was referring to? Yeah, re yeah, he was referring. Yeah. Oh, Triple X. Oh, you mean the the Vin Diesel movie? Yeah, the Vin Diesel movie. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. The sequel yes. is coming out. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. So all right. So Naughty America back in um, CS. back at CES had a, a demo of uh, VR adult content. Uh, on uh, a Samsung Gear VR, right? It was interesting, but you find out that you can tell when they did initial recordings and the newer ones, because I, I spoke with a the lady there, can't remember what her name was, and she says, yeah, the, the um, she showed me some of the newer content, and she showed me some of the older recorded content, and there's, a, there's an issue with scaling, right? Because you're there wearing a VR headset, and all of a sudden you see a woman who in, if you were in real life, you'd be close to seven foot tall. <laughs> you're standing over there. <laughs> like, huh, I don't know what's going on right now. There are a lot of mixed emotions here, but uh, it, it was interesting. I think it is something that is going to happen because it has happened with any uh, all new technology out there. It is something that's interesting if that's your cup of tea. But um, personally, you have a screen. Hey, I, I don't think you get anything more from the VR experience, except for being able to say, oh, wow, look, so, so, someone really cleared the bed. The bed's uh, properly set. Oh, wow, there's, <laughs> there's interesting objects on, on, on top of the cupboard. That's very interesting. So yeah, it's, 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 it gives you a different perspective if you want to like look around and see what's going on or whatever. But it is a 180, not a full 360. So it is a 180. So from your viewpoint forward. This uh, LG said, of course, Sam kept up with Northern America innovations. <laughs> 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 Joseph after says, says, um, triple uh, X movies will determine the winner of VRL. I mean, prawn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, LG is a point of view, Sam. Point of view. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say POV. Whatever. Uh, three Bow Wow 22 says, I'll just watch porn on my PC. Now they will sell the, the gear, gear VR with the S7 plus a flashlight combo. Wow. Oh, 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 wow. <laughs> okay. I think we just, you see, that just, you yeah, answer just one question. Again. All right. You all right, right one question and it turns into the, you know, uh, okay, yeah. right, let's just go back to this is from Chicago Herbs. He says, Do you think the Note 6 would be the last Note device from Samsung? No, you know how well this thing sells. <laughs> <laughs> no, it will not be the note, last Note device, but it will be the first device that would have bringing flexible displays, the Note 7, I think. Yeah, I, I, I because the Note line is the line that. The OE, you know, they've, they've traditionally added new technology in there. So they will have a regular Note, and they will have a Note Flex or something like that. Well, Just like with the, with the Edge. I think the Note 6 will surprise us with a continuum-like um, uh, device uh, with it. Because if you look at the way everything else is going, if you look at the way even HP was going with Windows Phone, and they have their own continuum type dock. Mm -hmm. I think what we've seen in Note 6 is the beginnings of that, and then Note 7 will make your device, your 
uh, Note device, basically your mobile PC on the go, or should I say your PC on the go? Um, I don't know if it's going to be flexible displays or whatnot, but I can. I, you can probably bet that it's going to try to make it. The six is going to be a little thinner. It's probably going to follow the same design uh, language as uh, the Note Five. Um, going to have a stylus, but I think it's definitely going to be, you know, they're going to take aim at that um, surface market, at that, you know, idea that you have a PC in your pockets vis-a-vis -vis continuum. Uh, that, that's, that's what I'm actually anticipating from, um, from Samsung. Yeah. I mean, I, I think so too, but I, I think, I think the Note 6 definitely will bring in some new features. I think Note 6 will go 4K. Uh, Samsung, some few Samsung execs have hinted about that. Um, because, and also just because when I spoke to some of the execs, uh, talking about the, what's the camera again? The Gear VR camera or is it just called Gear? Yeah, it's the Gear, the Gear, Gear 360. 360. The Gear 360. You know, and they talked about the fact that their camera, um, does, um, 4K recording. Uh, because when you're doing 360, you're breaking, you're almost breaking that down. It's almost 1080p when you stretch the image around. So that's why they want the, they wanted that camera to do 4K recording because to give you a better image. And also talking about the fact that you know uh, 4K displays. This also goes back to the to the point where Oculus has been, you know even though the Oculus uh, Rift is 2K display, they were aiming for 4K display. I don't think Samsung had anything viable enough for them yet at that time. Um, so I think the 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 Note 6 will have a 4K display with some ridiculous uh, pixel. Uh, uh, PPI ratios on there. Um, in terms of the in terms of flexible displays, I think that's where you see the Note Seven really change things. And maybe at some point they might change the naming uh, if it becomes too much. You know, just because you know when you get to ten, you don't want to be going Note Eleven and Note Twelve or you know, I you know Galaxy S you know twenty. They'll probably just start from one again with the Note V1, V2, or V whatever, and then they'll go after that the Note P1, P2, or whatever. And then they'll probably go. They'll probably keep it to ten. It just makes sense to keep it with ten. 10 yeah. Um, LGH says, should Samsung make the Note into a Note Active uh, now that they have the Edge Plus uh, as well? I really miss. I don't think the Edge Plus is coming back. Um, people always. Uh, I know I've seen a couple articles, but you have to remember the Edge Plus was five point seven. The regular new edge is 5.5. That's pretty much the edge plus. It's it's already in that category size wise. It's like 0.2 inches, you know. So, I think that's that's where it is. But in terms of active, I know because he's talking about exchangeable battery. I think the exchangeable battery is dead with Samsung. Samsung is not replacing the battery. It's not just with Samsung. It's with everyone, right? It really is. Except uh, LG. LG, L LG made a. Realistically, LG just basically paid fan service because if you look at the way the battery is implemented, it's it's really just a uh, it's a byproduct. In my from my point of view, it's a byproduct of having that um, that customizable dock on the bottom where you can pop out an add-on and pop another one in. You might as well make it you know possible to take out the battery. That's the way I feel, but maybe I'm wrong. But um, all in all, I, I think I think everyone is it's basically going to that you know it's it's it going to that eventuality that you know batteries are just they're going to be good enough to where you don't have to replace them um, you don't have to carry multiple batteries and if you really think about it how many people who actually carry multiple batteries um, around with them at all times so if one dies they just switch it out I haven't done that since I had a feature phone so. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely agree with you there. I think one of the things that a lot of people have to realize is that we need to have these companies go back to when, I mean, literally, we need to have batteries that last a week at some yeah. point. I mean, if you when cell phones first started, your batteries lasted forever. If you had yeah. a Nokia device, you knew, I mean, you were talking about days of use. You know? Yeah, but if you, if you look at the, the, the kind of functionalities you were getting from those devices, all you were getting was, Calls and limited text, limited. Yeah, no, but even, even the high-end Nokia phone, remember, they could still browse the web. All those that was later on. That came on later yeah, on. But, yes. but even those still had like four, or five. They could browse apps. the web, but remember, they could browse the web on Java, on Java-based yeah. um, um, yeah. browsers, which was just unusable. Yeah, it's like you, you only use it when you need it <laughs> to use it. It's like, do I need the pain right now? No, I don't. <laughs> I'll try this to look for it. You know, it's cheaper for me. It's, it is much easier for me to go to a FedEx location, yeah. pay that extra cash, 
and browse the web there. Like that. Yeah, no, very true. Because no, I, I remember the, the first time that I actually used a browser to purchase anything on a device was uh, my uh, Cyclone, my BlackBerry Cyclone. God, I used to love that device. My BlackBerry Cyclone. Oh my God, he just called back the Cyclone from BlackBerry, wow. Yeah, and that's when I first went online and I bought movie tickets because they were, I was trying to go to a, um, to a theater. We didn't have, uh, we weren't close to a computer. You know, back in those days, you could actually call the number. And I tried calling the number and I got put on hold. So I just basically, bam. Did it? Um, it wasn't fast. It wasn't quick, but it did work. And remember, this were not these things were not done over three G connectivity back then. Okay, <laughs> we were still on what was the equivalent edge. of edge. All right. So there were so many things that made it more difficult. So a lot of people didn't use all the added functionality on these devices. So in this day and age, where you're pushing four G antennas. Um, you push in NFC, Bluetooth, all these other um, little chips inside. I mean, all these other uh, functionality in your SOC. It, it, it's the battery needs to evolve. I guess the the the, the um, I guess the ask should be not to go back to the days when batteries lasted a week, but to to go back to or should I say to bring forward battery technology to where we don't have to be adversely affected by using the functionality of our phone, that we shouldn't have to choose between functionality and longevity. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I agree there. I think, I think some of the mixtures, I mean, we do know, number one, the biggest drain in batteries are display, right? That's the biggest drain in battery. So display technology and also OS functionality in terms of how it accesses the display and things like that. So it minimizes you know, some of that stuff in there. I think that's that what play plays a big role, and also you know to a certain degree battery size too. Apple is guilty of giving yeah. us ridiculously tiny batteries yep. for you know the iPhone. I mean the plus the plus is the one place where Apple really just went like everybody else and dropped a massive battery and was done. But on the regular iPhone, it is I mean it is task. If you use your iPhone a lot, you are just going to be suffering right there. You know trying to keep yeah. it running so. You know, it's one of those things um, I think, I mean, I agree with you. I think, it, you know, we need to move to at least multiple days where, you know, you, you don't you don't feel like you need to charge it because when you then, when you look at your device, maybe a day later, you're like, oh, okay, I should charge it. You know, we do know Oppo has a charging solution. They show that um, uh, MWC that will charge you your battery in 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll stay away from that until it's been proven. Yeah, I mean that that I don't know. Uh, I mean, I like the idea. I really like 15 yeah. minute charge. Like, you know, plug my phone, you know, I can imagine, you know, doing the hangouts, quickly drop my phone, charge it before I know it, it's already charged. But you know, what's the likelihood of it blowing up, you know? Yeah. Being super hot that I can't touch the phone for another five minutes. Yeah, you know, especially yeah. if you have a phone that's made out of metal too. That just and if you're charging, I, I, maybe this is just my lack of understanding of exactly how batteries work. But I always understood it that if you're charging a, a battery cell um, and you're doing it on that kind of scale when the battery wasn't built to uh, to basically saturate energy at that rate, then the depletion is actually it, it depletes faster. Because you're not getting an optimal charge on there. Yeah, but I mean that's one of the really problems with fast charging is that you always have to, um, when you're doing fast charging, there's almost like certain limit breaks. You know, it says it does a quick charge to like fifty percent in how many minutes. You want to leave it till it gets to that point or it gets to fully charge, yeah. because if you if you break it off before it gets to like fifty percent and you I got thirty five, I got some charge before you know it, it drains down again. Yeah. Or if you go to like 90 something and the next minute you're like, wow, it's already at 70, you know, 70%. So those are the kind of things you face. I don't know what kind of technology Oppo is using, what they've done. I mean, we'd like to see it. Hopefully nothing explodes, you know, because that would be great. I think that would be great if they can do it and they do it well, you know, so that, you know, we get better battery technology. A couple more questions before we round up here. Let's see. Oh yeah, do we have anything on entertainment? There were quite a rudimental said uh, only nuclear power. <laughs> <laughs> only nuclear power. Yeah, yeah. Only yeah. way is nuclear power. Yes, yes. We um, need radioactive phones 
that basically can contaminate uh, half a city, uh, half a city block every time anything happens. To them. That's exactly what we need. Chicago Joe Herb says, "I'm going back to my Palm Trio 300. I had AIM, Yahoo Messenger. You you couldn't tell me ish when I had that phone." <laughs> <laughs> There was a time when AIM, man, that was the... Uh, oh, man. Yeah. That's a joke. That's a joke. Man. Yeah, but on the entertainment side, um, this week was really all about um, Captain America Civil War and Spidey. Spidey showed yeah. up. Yeah. You know, Spidey has a new costume, kind of similar to old costume. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a new costume, very similar to the old school costume. Yes. Now, now this is. The, I wanted to ask you this question, yeah, because I know Lou brought it yesterday. I was asking if you what your thoughts were on this. Is the new Spidey suit? His eyes actually move. Mm -hmm. You know. So, do you think that was the suit is made by Tony Stark, and is this the Iron Spider? I say no. I say no. I say two things. There could be two things. We 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 know. We, or at least I strongly suspect that this is a first run of the Spidey costume. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's probably very CG in that. Um, it's, it's, oh, that it's, thing basically, is. it is CG. Yeah, in uh, in in, the, in its first showing. So it might just be that it was just bad CG that was done quickly, right? Um, apart from that, if the eyes move, maybe it is Iron Spider. Um, I can't remember. I, I didn't quite hear what Tony, um, what Stark said when he called Spider Man in. On the ruse. On the what? On the ruse. On the ruse. What the? F because the theory is when Tony meets Peter Parker and he mm -hmm. finds out. So this is where the story is. When uh, Iron Man and Iron Man One came out and says mm -hmm. Iron Man, that is the first time Peter Parker saw Tony Stark. He was five. Yep. Mm -hmm. He became an Iron Man fan, like a hard, you know, like anybody else. Like he, his young kid is Iron Man fan, five. And then he becomes Spider-Man at 15, 14, 15. So it's been 10 years between the first movie and uh, the last one. Which is actually chronologically the dates when the movies were released. Yep. And he's now, um, he's 15, he's now Spider-Man. He has a homemade Spider-Man outfit, pretty much like a hoodie in the colors, kind of as soon as you've seen that in the comic book. So his joke is that you're wearing underwear as far as he's concerned. <laughs> so that's why he says on the roofs. That's, that's where that joke comes from. Even though people, I mean, like, most people don't know it. Everybody's all hyped about it. Like, oh, on the roofs. I'm like, you have no idea where that comes from. I don't, I don't, I don't. Uh, I, don't I mean, know. I, because it's <laughs> context. It's more or less, if you see Spidey with his, like, janky costume, then you go, okay, makes sense. Because I think, he, in a sense, he used, like, pajama material. To make his outfit. Yeah, no, it's Spider Man has always it's always been an ongoing joke that Spider Man is always ripping his costume or yeah. you know, people are like, Wait, really? That's that's all you can afford your superhero for Christ's sakes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, which makes sense. I said to me the joke makes sense, all because I know it, but literally <laughs> yeah, it's not. No, I, I, I'm very passionate about Spider Man, and even I don't get that joke. Right? <laughs> even I didn't get that joke. So, <laughs> yeah, it is. So that's that's where it comes from. Um, yeah. So I think the eyes moving aren't a bad thing. I think the eyes moving might actually be a good thing. I'm hoping at the end of the day that it might actually be the Iron Spider. Uh, if it is the Iron Spider, then the colors are all off. The colors should be golden red. I want and that Iron black. Spider. I wish he looked to me if he showed up. So I watched the trailer because I was talking to Lou. Lou. Lou sent me a message. I was coming back home. He's like, you need to go watch this trailer, man. I want to see your reaction. And I did my reaction. My reaction was a little passe. I mean, granted, I am more of a DC fanboy, but I still like Marvel movies. And the I watched it. I, I was like, yeah, Spider-Man. But then I, when I heard the kid's voice, it threw me off. No, I think the voice is very good. It, I don't think the voice is bad. No, do you know, you know why? Peter Parker. No, you were so comparing it to Tobey Maguire. No, Everybody no, no, no. That Spider -Man Dude, I hate Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. Well, everybody compares every all the no, Spider-Man. No, 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 you know just, why? Uh, I, I figured it out yesterday. I watched it, I watched it a couple more times. I clearly knew, like my brain automatically knew that was not him talking. I mean, sorry, sorry, talking from the suit. It was a voiceover, and that was an a another actor, and that was a CG suit. Like my I literally was watching uh, it. Like, so yeah, uh, maybe the movies will be better. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, I agree. Maybe maybe it would just threw me off because you know how this like this movie is gonna be something, man. That they're throwing so much at it. So much. My, see, my thing with this movie is, and I, I was saying I was gonna do I'm gonna do a video tomorrow, is um there are things in the MCU that really piss me off that they do, they do not address and they just magically address now, which 
a lot of you know fans make fun of you know man of steel and say superman killed all these people in metropolis and then they now show us that all these people died during avengers avengers age of ultron uh mm -hmm. captain america civil war but the death thrills do not make any sense to me whatsoever ever only only 74 people died in new york during that battle yeah yeah and then you know with um and then the the, the value of um destruction for the dc one was only 2.3 billion dollars i'm going you destroyed four hella character hella carriers in the u.s to make a, a aircraft carrier is over yeah. a billion dollars yeah simple so you destroy three hell even if we priced it the same that's three billion minus the base minus, minus the half bill, of the DC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> minus the freaking country that you basically uprooted from the oh, ground the, the, the one from the country the pricing was all right it was 474 billion dollars i can i okay. can give that's good i can give out and 117 people died from that remember in that yeah, movie right yeah. they would say save everyone save everyone yeah, they was, still, they made it such... gonna sorry go ahead yeah, but people are still gonna die in that context. So, so yeah, no, I, I think there's there's a big disparity between because at the end of the day, if you look at the scale of the battle they were having, and just just from basically Hulk going up against one of those aliens, personally, I would say thirty <laughs> people die from that. <laughs> just from that alone. Yeah, because the shockwave probably killed like fifty <laughs> people. Yeah, you know. So it's like, come on, <laughs> let's be realistic. But um, the, the one thing I liked in the trailer there was the prison. Now, remember in the comic books, the prison was in the negative zone built by Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And I know they can't do it, but I liked I liked the compromise they made. You know, this this is not the negative zone, but underwater also with a lot of pressure makes sense. You can't escape. You probably die even if you're a superhero. I mean, unless you're Aquaman or something. You know, so that that made sense. I like that aspect about it. it. I mean, it was it was a cool trailer. It was cool to see Black Panther just run around and. <laughs> yeah, that that's gonna be interesting. I want to see how they introduce Black Panther into all of this. I, I think from the trailer, this is me guessing. His dad dies in the explosion because you see T'Challa holding someone and he's crying, or it looks like he's in tears because either Winter Soldier or somebody from hydra blew up like a un conference and that killed yeah. uh so he becomes king from there which is a little different from i mean comic book it was he was challenged by somebody uh the white is it white tiger, no, white tiger any, any, any like, anyone could any, 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 any clan, clan would, yeah it was a white tiger i think or something like that challenged him yeah. and then yeah um, i think any clan can challenge for the for the mantle yeah. you have to you have to earn the uh the black panther uh mantle which is interesting yeah no, no, no. You just have to earn the, the it's not Black Panther. You can, because in the comics is the different like animal tribes, almost mm -hmm. the way it's smart. And it's almost like saying, you know, it's time for the lion tribe to become king of Wakanda, not the Panthers, but the Panthers have ruled, you know, for. Huh. Yeah, I, I, maybe I understood it differently because I thought the, the, uh, the Black Panther was um, the royal, um, like the royal icon, like whoever became king became the Black Panther. You got that, to wear the hands with the claws. You got to wear That's what I thought, that's what I thought the... before until I found out, I read one where, the one where his dad was challenged by somebody who was called something like tiger or whatever, it was like a different animal. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe yeah. it's different. But it's yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, thanks for joining. Um, it will be, you know, uh, we had a pretty good show. It was both of us here. Um, Sam, what can we expect from you next week or at least the following week? I know yeah, we still have still, that NAS. Yeah, we still have to get the NAS out. Um, and uh, apart from that, I think that's about it. That's going to be the NAS. Oh, actually, um, the bag. Yes, yes. The guys from Case Logic are really nice to give us a bag during CES. And this bag went also on our trip to NWC. Um, so give you a quick walk through on exactly uh, what I liked about the bag. Um, you know, if I recommend the bag for your tech or whatnot, it's a really, it's, it's uh, going to be, uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. It's interesting. So, uh, I'll, I'll get that out as well. So both of those should be, um, done in the next few days. All right, cool. Uh, on, uh, on my end, uh, this is what we had this week. Uh, we had a lot of Spider-Man stuff. <laughs> just put it that way a lot of civil war uh stuff also the review of 10 cloverfield lane that's a very good movie absolutely fantastic movie i never um, saw the first one so i wasn't sure if i was gonna this see has 
uh, has everything and nothing to do with the first one. Huh, interesting. So I won't spoil it. I, I have to put it that way. Um, oh, it's uh, and also uh, our Galaxy S7 unboxing and mini reviews up. We'll have a full review for that next week, but probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and we have a few Galaxy S7 cases coming up in terms of reviews. Um, I will try and drop a review of the division either tomorrow or Monday. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, I just just to let you know, the game is good. I mean, I don't even have to tell you too much. Uh, this is our new game that we are playing right now. And yeah, it's an awesome game. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. So uh, I'll give you a breakdown, you know, at least give you some parts of it. I've done about four or five hours of the game. Uh, I know Sam has done probably, what, like 10? Um, yeah, quite a few hours. I'm yeah. trying to get, I'm trying to level up to a certain point so I can uh, do more uh, dark zones. Dark, 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 dark missions, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, the game, game has... Um, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you this, this spoiler right now. This is what Destiny should have been. Yeah, no question, no yeah, question. But let's, let's let's save it for the reviews because I'm sure they want to watch the review. They want to yeah. they want to see your take on it. Um, it's going to be pretty interesting, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, definitely follow us. Follow Sam on Twitter. His handle is Black Iron underscore Man. Mine is Board at Work. You can also check out Sam's videos on Board at Work Network. It is Board at Work YouTube. All the links are down below in the description to follow us. If you want to also download all the wallpapers, it's on our Pinterest page. So just follow us there. Uh, this is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment. Thank you.